In this episode, we'll talk about the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is a dual transmitter system. So you get two transmitters to a single receiver. entire episode, you're hearing the Rode Wireless Go 2. I'm wearing the transmitter just here. That's transmitting to the receiver, which is all my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So it's feeding the audio into there. That's what you're hearing throughout this entire episode. For most of the episode, we did apply some EQ just to kind of make it sound a little bit better. So we applied this EQ curve right here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and give you a sample without any sort of processing so you can hear what it sounds like directly out of the camera. A couple of audio samples here. First of all, I am working with the Rode Wireless Go 2. It is attached right here on my chest, and this is no microphone attached. We're just using the inbuilt lavalier microphone or the inbuilt microphone in the transmitter itself. And we are feeding the audio out at 0 dB into the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And then we have that set to the gain on the inputs there set to 60%. Uh, so we're at mic level on the recorder or the camera, and this is what it sounds like. Let's give you a few moments of silence. Got a few fans going here. The light that's putting the light on the wall behind me has a fan. It's behind this sound blanket, but I'm still hearing some of it. Next up, we're recording with the Lavalier Go attached to my chest just here. And that's going into the Wireless Go 2. And again, going over to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. This is what this sounds like. Finally, here's an audio sample with the Sankin Cos 11D. Professional grade lavalier microphone plugged into the Wireless Go 2. Again, still transmitting over to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. All the settings exactly the same. This is what it sounds like. What makes the Rode Wireless Go 2 special? Well, first of all, is the fact that it has two transmitters, so you can mic up two different people, and those both send to a single receiver that then feeds the audio out to your camera, or to your mobile device, or even via USB to your computer. The next very exciting feature on the Rode Wireless Go 2 is that it does record a backup recording to each of the transmitters while you're shooting, and so if the wireless signal cuts out, you still have a backup recording on the transmitter. The transmitter is recording if you set it to uncompressed mode into basically a WAV file, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and you can record up to seven hours. If you need longer recording time, you also can set it to MP3, which is a lower quality audio recording, but you can record up to 40 hours in that case. There are inbuilt batteries on both the transmitters and on the receiver, and in our tests, we ran it solid for six hours and 46 minutes on a single charge. So Road said in their specs, seven hours, we got pretty close to that. One feature that's very much appreciated is the fact that since you have two transmitters, what you can do is you can set the receiver to a couple of different modes. Number one, you can set it to merged mode or to split mode. And what that means in practical terms is if you want to keep the two different microphones on different channels in your camera, you set it to split mode. That sends, say for example, transmitter number one to the left channel on your camera and transmitter two to the right channel. So that allows you in post to do a much more careful mix and adjust those two independently of each other. If you need something a little more straightforward that you're gonna turn around much more quickly, then there is also merged mode, which actually just mixes the two into a single mono recording. So you'll hear the same thing on the left and right channel, both microphones. Now, if you are in merged mode, another nice feature is that you can set this to record a safety channel. What a safety channel does is it records the exact same audio as you have the gain set to on the right channel at 20 decibels lower. So that is to say, if I get too loud and start clipping, the safety channel will be 20 dB lower, so those won't be clipped, and you can cut over to that in post if you need to. So pretty nice feature there as well. A nice step up over the first generation Wireless Go is that in this case, we have much finer grain control over the overall output level. So we can go anywhere from zero dB all the way down to minus 30 dB. The reason that's really helpful is that some of the mirrorless cameras have really, really hot microphone inputs, and so having that greater range to attenuate the level output from the receiver is really helpful to keep you from clipping. As you can see here, we're using the inbuilt microphone on the transmitter. Each of the transmitters has an inbuilt microphone, and it sounds pretty decent. In our sample recording, we recorded a little bit of silence, and that's really just sort of room tone, and also a test to see where the noise floor sat. So what we did is we loudness normalized the overall audio, 
to minus 23 LUFS, and then we measured that silent portion, and we found that it sat at minus 70 dB RMS max, which is very, very good. Same type of test that I do on most of my microphone and wireless system reviews. This one came out really well, so good job, Rode. Now, if you're not really into using the inbuilt microphone, you can also plug in an external lavalier microphone or other microphones, say, for example, camera top shotgun microphones. It has a 3.5 millimeter TRS input, and it supplies four volts of plug-in power if your microphone needs that. Most lavaliers need that. In terms of range that the transmitters can operate from the receivers, we did an indoor test and an outdoor test. In the indoor test, we walked the length of our home, and our home is about 25 meters in length total. So we walked out of the office here, up the stairs, through a couple of doors, and walked around on the next story up, and you can see we never dropped the signal. So really good performance there. Stairs. I'm right behind you on the stairs. Through another door. Another drawer. Door. Oh, door. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna go to the kitchen. That's okay. cool. At that Going end. The so you're at one end of the house. I'm walking back towards the other end of the house where we started, but on the second floor above there. So how are things over there? Good. I'm in the kitchen. It's nice okay. in the kitchen. All right. And now I'm walking over to the other end of the house here. I'm at the completely opposite end of the house of Danny. How's everything over there? Good. I'm, I'm just hanging out in the kitchen. Okay. Things are mellow out here. Yep. Here we come back. Okay, we're coming back. How are things in your part of the house? Uh, the, that light was very bright. Mm. So... Are we going back downstairs? Yeah, back downstairs. Okay. So we're going Here back we go. through the second door. We can turn that light on. Excellent. Why'd you turn it off? I don't know. To have it, have it mostly. <laughs> Leave it on. <laughs> okay. Uh, walking downstairs. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and come back in to the room. Yep. We'll see how the how things did. All right, you can go ahead and have your seat and I'll have mine. Now for the outdoor test, we went out into a space where there were no nearby walls or anything else. And this is probably the most challenging test for a wireless system because they tend to do the worst in terms of range in these kind of scenarios. And what we found is we dropped the signal once we got about 47, almost 50 meters away. So that's pretty good for a 2.4 gigahertz wireless system. So definitely an improvement over the first generation and very much in line with the current competitors to this system. We All right, we say things while we walk. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so this is gonna be our distance test and our uh, wind test to see how well the fur covers do out here in the wind. Uh, how many meters are we away from this right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven meters. So we're gonna start at seven meters. We'll stop about every 25. Five. Okay, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, we'll stop here. Turn around. Oh, this is straight into the wind. This is like a serious test of the fur covers. Yeah. How's everything over there? Fine. Okay. Uh, what's the temperature right now? Uh, it says it's 42. There's a wind chill though. Yeah. I'd say it's about 35 to 40. Yeah, so uh, for those that do Celsius, it's probably t one to five degrees. Yeah. Maybe not even five. Okay, we're gonna keep going. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, I think what we need to do is have you recite the words to a song while we're walking, and I will count. Why? It's because we need to make sure that there's audio coming in through both channels at all times. I'm gonna run out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> On the way down, you shouldn't. Okay, well, here we go. good luck. To here you, we man. go. There, yeah. I don't understand what they're doing. <sighs> Question mark? I don't know. You got me. Maybe he's going to go work on the road or something. Interesting. Uh, 
Wow, this is very unpleasant. Uh, well, <laughs> the show must go on. Yeah. And people need to know how far the wireless go to can reach. Yep. One challenge that comes along with digital wireless systems is latency. And latency is just the amount of time it takes for the audio to come into the transmitter, be transmitted to the receiver, and then fed out to the camera. And some of the wireless systems that are digital actually have quite a bit of latency, and so that can create sync issues. That is to say, if you were to record a wired mic and a digital system at the same time, the digital system would arrive at your camera or audio recorder later, and it would be out of sync a little bit. The great thing about the Rode Wireless Go 2 is that its latency is less than five milliseconds, so it's basically imperceptible. That's a very good spec. Now, if you are working outside, that does come also with these fur covers to prevent the wind from creating distortion when you're working outside. And the Generation 2 here has a much better mechanism for locking those fur covers on, and they work really well, as you saw in the distance test. The overall kit, of course, includes the two transmitters and receiver. It includes three USB-C to USB-A cables for charging and connecting the transmitters and receivers to your computer to change the settings with the app. And it also includes a 3.5 millimeter TRS cable to output the audio from the receiver into your camera. Now, if you do need to output the audio to your iOS or Android phone, you will need separate cables for that. I'll put links for those down below. Now, along with the Rode Wireless Go 2, there is also a new app called the Rode Central app. It runs on Mac and PC. And what this allows you to do is to set some of the more advanced settings of the recorder the mute switch behavior, the gain resolution, and it also allows you to do firmware updates. And of course, it allows you to download the recordings that were made to the transmitters. The kit comes with a two-year warranty, and at the time of this review, the price comes in at $299 US. Now, no product is perfect, so let's talk about some of the things that I see as cons, or at least notes that you need to know about. They're not necessarily deal breakers, but let's run through those. First of all, the inbuilt batteries are not user replaceable. So, if at some point in the distant future they stop working and they need replacement, you'll probably have to send them into Rode and have them replaced at the factory. This is not so much a con, but just something to know, depending on what you're planning to do with them. If you're going to be working outdoors in the wide open, I wouldn't plan on getting the transmitter more than about 30 or 40 meters away from the receiver, and I would definitely try to keep them within line of sight, not, for example, on the back of a person on their belt or anything like that. These really struggle a little bit more than UHF systems when you're working outdoors in the wide open, so just be aware of that. Now this one's really picky, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it because one of the competitors that we'll talk about in a little bit do this, but that 3.5 millimeter input on the transmitter is a microphone level only input, so you cannot input a line level device. So if you're planning, for example, to send audio from your recorder over to a camera using this system, it's not going to work so well unless you have some sort of attenuator cable or some other hack. One of the other competitors actually allows you to switch that input to line level. The Rode Central app is for Mac and Windows, and unfortunately it does not run on iOS or Android. It'd be really nice out in the field to be able to run the app on a phone so that you could change some of the settings. Obviously it's not so useful for downloading files, but if I wanted to quickly change some of those settings out in the field, I may or may not have my laptop with me, so that's a little bit of a downside. And this last item is something I'm pretty confident that Rode will fix because they've already done several updates, but the app is still a little bit on the buggy side. So for example, when I was downloading one of the files from the transmitter, if I clicked and moved the little progress bar, it actually kind of froze up. So there are just some little things like that that they're still working out. That was on the Mac version. I'm pretty sure based on the amount of updates they've done, they'll get those sorted out here pretty soon. Now, in regards to batteries, let me just give you some information that Rode sent to me after I asked them specifically about replacing the batteries. They wrote back and said, we do not currently have a battery replacement program outside the two-year warranty period, but the Wireless Go 2 contains high-quality lithium-ion batteries that will ensure reliable performance over a very high number of recharge cycles. With average use, we expect the batteries to still be performing well after 10 years, but if anybody is experiencing issues with the battery life in that period, we do encourage them to get in touch to discuss replacement. Now, I do want to clarify something that has come up in a lot of questions and forums and things like that. One of the questions is, wow, this is a 32-bit float recorder, right? I can do that wide dynamic range recording. And the answer is, while the app does support downloading of the files from the transmitters in 32-bit float format, these do not have any sort of dual analog to digital converter, so they don't actually record wide dynamic range. In fact, you can clip the audio coming in, so you will have to watch that gain level on your receiver. Now, 
here's a sample where you can see how it actually did clip. And you can see also, incidentally, along at the same time, we recorded one of the safety channels just so you can see what that looks like as well. All right, this is going to serve a couple purposes. So I'm doing a safety track recording here. So it is recording my input at the level I set. In this case, it's minus 6 dB. And that's coming in a little bit hot. And then it's on the, that's on the left channel. And then on the right channel, it's recording the same thing at minus 20 dB from what I've set. So technically minus 26 dB in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and try and push this a little bit. All right, let's see if this is clipping on the Panasonic GH5 and what is happening to the safety channel at the same time. I think some people will be disappointed in that, but honestly, there aren't any consumer grade wireless systems that do 32-bit float wide dynamic range recording as of today in 2021. So I don't really see it as a problem, just something to be aware of. Don't be thinking that you have a wide dynamic range wireless system that cannot clip. The reality is it can clip, so you do have to be careful and set your game. That's just a simple skill to learn and it's not hard. Now, one of the big questions I think is going to come up is how does this compare to the Hollyland Lark 150 and the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro? We reviewed both of those a couple of weeks ago. I'll go ahead and put a link for that review back up here. But there are some things that I want to run through that are a little bit different with this system versus those. And if I can start by saying of the three, the one that I probably prefer the most is the Rode Wireless Go 2. There are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it had the cleanest audio in terms of overall self noise and its overall practical noise floor performance. So that's a huge deal, of course, when you're dealing with audio. I also felt like the Rode Wireless Go had the most intuitive user interface and button layout and screen. So that's a plus as well. Definitely prefer the form factor of the Rode Wireless Go versus the other two. And honestly, that recording to the transmitters is really kind of a killer feature. So that is one of the I think the biggest things that differentiates the Rode Wireless Go from the other two, which do not have that feature. Now, the other two do have some advantages as well, and let me run through a couple of those. First of all, both the Hollyland Lark 150 and the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro both come with charging cases. That is to say, you can drop the two transmitters and the receiver into a case that has its own battery and recharge them while you're in the middle of a shoot. So that's a really, really nice feature. The Wireless Go does not have that feature. As I mentioned before, the Ceramonic Blink 500 does have the ability to switch the 3.5 millimeter input on the transmitter to line level. So that's super useful for those that are trying to find an inexpensive or relatively inexpensive way to transmit audio from your audio recorder to a camera while you're on set. And I will say that that Lark 150 does have really nice knobs for adjusting the gain for the input. So I do miss that on the Wireless Go, but overall I would say the Wireless Go is probably my favorite of these three systems. So there's a look at the Rode Wireless Go 2. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.